You are listening to the Lucha Central Podcast Network. And now, LuchaCentral.com presents Masks, Mats, and Mayhem. I'm going to leave it in the other box. How about I... How about you bend over and I put something in your fart box? Okay. Fire it. Welcome to another edition of Mass Max and Mayhem. I am your announcer, Justin Outlaw, and this show is being hosted this week by at Byron Fever. Hi, oh. Byron. Say hello. Hi, Justin. Hey, uh, welcome everyone at Byron Fever. Hit me up Justin on Venmo. Justin at Byron, I just, I Byron know, Venmo. Did, was Byron okay uh, at, at being a, uh, a host last week, Case? Yeah. No, he wasn't the host. Dreadful. Taz Who was the host. host. Taz. Taz. The human yeah. suplex machine was hosting the show last week. Yeah. And Byron God, was just like another, Byron just was another human victim. centipede machine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh he's God. the he he's oh he's the God. back one. Um, this is this is super weird that I'm uh I'm back in the Cleveland location for this show, and uh it is a one night only. Uh, thing I literally just flew here for the day, and I'm flying back to Charlotte, where I was this morning. Tomorrow, so strange. That's this cool. is what happens when you get vaccinated. People just expect you to start making towns like the second you get shots. Mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of which, who's this guy? And we'd like to welcome in longtime MMM show co-host, the Jimmy V at the Jimmy V. How's it going, Jimmy? Doing all right. It's good to be back. And speaking of shots, got mine, and I'm all good. So. Yeah, we were just talking about that. I was uh, I'm in Cleveland literally for today because now that I've been vaccinated, people just expect me to fly and make towns and do all sorts of stuff immediately. No, no rest for the dead or not dead, I guess, in this case. For Byron, now. um, yeah, so Byron, up? you you basically failed at hosting last week and you let Taz take over. Is that what happened? Oh, I, I did my I did my best. I was about three words in and then Taz started yelling. And then what he do? with that you know well you can't. i i know i uh i was cutting in and out when i was burying evil east last week i apologize yeah. uh i apologize that you guys didn't get to hear everything and i've calmed down i've calmed down so much now like i don't i i'm i don't hate evie anymore i'm not super hot i'm not super mad Usa. yeah we've moved on to apathetic at this point Usa. no here's the thing here's the thing is it really apathetic or just more like i don't feel like discussing her at all anymore it's a- it, apathy or schadenfreude uh yeah i mean the the mickey Did james right, the mickey james thing got <laughs> me to a certain point where i was just like <laughs> to so be fair gonna, mickey james did a- pit to pit, post a picture of evil east okay a so, big old so big trash. Yeah. well so, look for those just, who just don't so know everyone go yeah, ahead go ahead you explain, it. No, you explain it I'll, I'll let you do this because maybe you'll get this part right go ahead i'll do this and then and that way you can also you can zen a little bit more before you okay, we'll you see. get heated about what you're gonna say They're about gonna it. Reheat him now. But uh, what happened was, um, well, when people get fired or maybe when it's only the female employees get let go from WWE, they put your stuff in a trash bag, put it in a box, send it to you, which is it is what it is. It's not the nicest thing, what but is, it's what, also where are you leaving things? So is my Mickey question. James, Mickey James posted a picture of hers. Um, saying thanks pretty much just because it was a metaphor for the last three years that she was employed there. Other people took it a different way. Like it was a huge PR nightmare and there was huge apologies. It became a whole, whole ordeal. Right. And oh, I love Steph's apology that, that she didn't just call Mickey. It's not like she doesn't have the woman's phone number or she could call Nick Aldis or anything. It's like, these people are, in the business, you can get their phone numbers. You can yeah. just make a personal phone call. No, she made the uh, she she made the very very public tweet and apologized for it, which is still fine. Like I'm not yeah. mad at her for doing it, but also uh, like it was a little she, bit PR yeah. protection as well. Let's be honest. I think she had to. I think Hunter also had to, but they should have also done the phone call. Mickey had a great response where she said, uh, "It's all good." I, you know, this was a bit of an oversight. It, I definitely took it a lot more personal ten years ago when it first happened. Um, but you know, this isn't really meant for someone to get fired over because they said they fired someone, Mark Carano, over uh, over it. Uh, but then Mickey threw this uh, this little 
after I, I saw on Reddit, someone put it beautifully where she went in for the hug and then, then shivved Stephanie as soon as she got close where she's said all the nice stuff. And then she goes, yeah, it just, it's what really got me about it was, it was just, you know, such a metaphor for my booking over the last right. three years with your company. <laughs> <laughs> and Which, look, when they first brought her back, like yeah. the booking was really good and she was doing stuff with Alexa and well, like we knew she wasn't going to be like the top, top of the division she was at putting any point that, in time. That wasn't she was, why she was there. She was putting the stars over. She, yeah, for she sure. did something with Oscar, right? Yeah. She, she, she helped out a lot of the girls along the way and everybody was really, really happy to have her in the locker room. And here's the thing. I know a lot of people are trashing the whole, like letting her go during COVID this, that, or the other thing. Realistically speaking, this is exactly the point in time when I thought they would release Mickey James again anyway. I don't think that it was like some rude thing or whatever. It was like, I, I I believe they brought her back for a three or four year life cycle in the first place. I mean, that's kind of yeah. been their MO with people like her in the past. And I was happy that she got that run. And mm -hmm. I think she knew as well that, you know, that run wasn't going to last forever. She wasn't going to be some, you know, natty that probably will get to stay in the ring her entire career. Like nobody gets to do that anymore unless Why? you're really... You know, I well, that's a, another that's fine another. question. But she 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 has pictures of somebody. And I, well, oh, but I mean, God. she has a certain lineage, and she's been around the business a long time. And she's whatever. also really good behind the scenes, and she definitely has someone you can count on to like throw Ronda Rousey or someone like that. She at. also plays the game backstage too, and I don't think Mickey. Yeah. I think Mickey has some influence, but I don't think Mickey was really a key player or whatever. And they weren't banking on her for the future, so I Plus, get you're it. Start on yeah. Teddy Hart's cousin. So, so oh, you're gonna get yeah. murdered. So anyway, that whole thing happened and you know a lot of people got a lot of people took the trash bag thing as a personal insult. And really you could do you're a multi-million billion whatever dollar entertainment company. You could have an actual bag and a little card that says thank you for your for working for us or something nice. Good luck. You know, just like the tweet, you could spend an extra five dollars. A WWE do duffel but, bag, at least, I think, would be appropriate. I mean, they cost. Or Icon Pro. Yeah, yeah, I, but yeah. Like, they probably Alex got a warehouse full of those. Alex Rodriguez, right. when you know, when a woman is lucky enough to, to you know, they get assigned baseball, they get a limo ride home. You know what I mean? Like, right. have some class. I mean, uh, look, the Andrade duffel bag would at least be nice. You know, they're yeah. not throwing those things anymore <laughs> anyway. So. <laughs> so anyway, so that that whole thing was happening. Mickey yeah, so I'll just leave the evil lease, Byron. So Mickey handled everything with complete class because she knows she doesn't need the company. She has a thousand because, other things It's because on. Mickey then, James is an anagram for genuine class. Then... Then wow. she's married to Nick Aldis, by the way, who is basically running NWA right now. It's not like she can't she can't have another job in wrestling tomorrow if she wants one. Yeah. And it but yeah, she's also done it for a while and she does other stuff, and I believe they have kids. It's just like she it's not her whole world. She has yeah, she was like a bona fide country star a couple yeah. years ago. She was touring and making real money doing that before they asked her back. Which is also probably why WWE let her go, because she didn't need them. You know, so um, also probably why they brought her back because she was packing stadiums just doing country music. Yeah. <laughs> so so someone um, what's is there a term for um, for uh, what is it? There's something um, like if someone like Chris Jericho like has a habit of this where someone else, let's say like Orange Cassidy, this was in a promo last week is is doing good numbers and is up and coming in hot and Jericho will work a program with him to seem relevant or he'll work Coat a tails? program with MJF stealing the rub he'll cherry see. picker. Yeah. yeah you know, cherry picking that, yeah, that, that sort of thing. So someone popped in to the Twitter threads and tried to do that with this whole situation, went up to tweet it at Mickey James. I don't even know if Mickey James even acknowledged or replied and said, yeah, us women veterans in the business, are really not treated well. So much disrespect. Someone said that. Yes. Ivalice said that. <laughs> and here's why I am no longer hot at Ivalice. Because <laughs> you don't need to be. There is because she made you laugh. One single decent or nice or supportive comment on that entire thread from a WWE superstar that is trending on their main tweet. So, you know, a lot of fans are seeing this. 
the closest thing she got to support was two people just saying like, oh, what happened? Like two people questioning it, but no one, once they were told they didn't, they weren't like, oh yeah, right on Evie. I mean, just buried by her own fans in the comments of that tweet. And it was like, wow. I, I mean, what do you expect attention. when you're trying to get sympathy? You're, first of all, you're trying to get a rub and sympathy at the same time, but then you can't ask for that when everyone has the ability to post the same clip of you not selling, like right. completely not selling. Oh, you can't yeah. ask for sympathy and the rub, let alone just one of those things when that exists. Well, and she spent the better part of the week trying to bury another performer. That was so, like Whoa. what she could have done was not reminded people of that. And, and then she would have had a case. She would have had I something got no worth. Sympathy. I got no sympathy for Eve Lease. <laughs> More like Eva Trash. Okay, there, so yeah, but it's it. like Thanks, Scotty. Maybe do it. Yeah, yeah, Thanks, Scotty. But it's just like, first of all, you, you're going to give the benefit of the doubt to a lot of the guys besides the Apple guy at AEW. But at least you could, at least it would. You'd give Eva Lee. You'd want to hear the explanation. But when she goes, everything like I got treated poorly. It because of this person and heat from this thing that happened so long ago, everyone already forgot it and got over it. They already even got over and forgot the program that resulted from it. And she has to bring it up and she a hundred percent looks bad. Whereas the other person is doing comment, starting to do commentary for a company she doesn't even work for. Like, right. <laughs> the Spanish commentary, by the way, Spanish. But I mean, it's like, yeah. And this is a little bit what I was saying yesterday. It was like, yes, they had, they, they, they butted heads a little bit. It happens, whatever, you know, who cares? They, they didn't get along, you know, maybe Thunder Rosa was a little stiff with her or whatever, but I, I honestly, I believe that that's a respect a sign of respect from her. I mean, she's worked with a lot of Japanese performers. If she's working snug with you, I mean, I think that's more respect of like, Hey, we can actually go in here and bang. We can do some stuff and make this look real good. You're wasn't that girl, thing, that girl. she was the baddest bitch and she was, she done MMA and she yeah, was so that's dead a hard. Work, and- though. I mean, like yeah. you look, some people like to perform a certain way as a shoot, but I, it was, it was more of, Evie felt like she's the veteran and wanted to lead, and she wanted to mm-hmm. create the style Jesus of the matches God, and the flow the and the pacing. To a park. But yeah, but it's, it's I, like maybe suck less. And you I can wouldn't lead say matches. that though. You, if you watch some of those matches with her and Diamante when they started going off in the tag division, she was leading them, and they were good. Yeah, and I'm not. I am not saying by any stretch of the imagination that Eva Lee doesn't know what she's doing when all this is together. When she's got her head screwed on, right? She's a fabulous performer. It's one of the reasons why we we kept rooting for her too. Like, man, she's starting to finally turn it on. Like, we were all afraid when she first got to AEW because those first few weeks when she got there, they mm. weren't great. And was like, damn it, I hope she doesn't blow this opportunity. But then she slowly was putting in the work. She turned it around. She was out of the whole sphere of Thunder Rosa. They both had separate programs. They were getting individualized pushes. And then her push cooled. Because she was on a company. She's there on borrowed time and they're trying to make something out of it and keep their yeah. relationships good. Evie was there on a per use kind of contract, you know, talking like she was actually full time signed, even though she wasn't. Um, and, you know, her program cooled off a little bit. They weren't doing anything with her. And then she gets irritated and starts taking it out on Thunder Rosa. And then, you know, your big surprise, she gets let go from the company because they're not using her. They don't have a use for her right now. Yeah. And she's rubbing people the wrong way in the back. And also, I, like her perspective, and, and you guys should chime in, and I'm not going to rant about Eva Lisa anymore because yeah. I agree with all the same points. She I'm broke it off. I echo everything Justin said. She's in love but, with um, but also, her, she just has such a weird perspective on reality where it's just not there. She wasn't a full-time contracted employee ever. Uh, did she get an all elite graphic? Maybe she did, but she was nope, paid per. Never did. No, she was paid per show, you know? So like she's on super double probation to like make it worth their while. And some people have, and some people haven't. Some people like pineapple. And they held off on bringing her in in the first place for a long time. I mean, she was available at the same time everybody else was. She got out Mm of her Lucha contract for the express purpose of trying to go to AEW, and they didn't take her the first time. She was a Lucha alumni, friends with all the people, friends. Like they brought in Sunny. You know who they, yeah, I was just going to say, you know who they brought in instead of Ivalice? They brought in Sunny Kiss. 
who was hell yeah. green as hell and had just started in Lucha and was friends with Evie and Lucha. And they brought in Sonny instead at the beginning. Yeah. Way ahead of time, Smart way before move. they needed Sonny. Which is but, Smart move. But it's a much, it's a better investment as, you know, time has, has proven I, again. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Honestly, well, Ivelisse yeah. is a veteran. She can go in the ring when she wants to. She can cut promos. She can do good with storylines. And she can actually be good to work with, but she's not right now. Yeah. Um, so y- you just got to yeah. take, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Here's my what I'm going to say. Though, okay. Go ahead. Byron. I was just going to say my whole thing is, the headline is completely wrong in this anyway, because you don't say that AEW released Ultimo Panda. Right. She was she just they're they're not booking her anymore. Right. They're just not booking her anymore. And that's all it is. And she took it the wrong way because she thought she was on a different trajectory. I'm gonna say this. I still wish her the best. As as heated as I was about it last week. And I, I just I didn't like I didn't like the way she was burying Mel on the way out the door. I just thought that that was classless and I still do, mm-hmm. but I, I, I still wish her the best. I don't wish her any ill will. I hope that she finds a place out there. I hope she gets some stuff going on in the Indies or maybe that she finds another home or maybe, I don't know, friggin' MLW or NWA or impact or somebody else will put her in the locker anyway. room and maybe, she, may, well, yeah, probably not. Um, but I, I hope that she gets another chance. I hope that she gets another. Byron was like, yeah, Mel should book her at mission pro. I don't know. I if was you thinking can do that. that, but yeah. Well, we'll I mean, if, I, if I'm if I'm Eva Lee's, that's the first thing I'm trying to do. Besides, see, and no offense at all, but like, see a therapist or something to like sort this stuff out. And she's been going through a lot, and I don't mean that as an insult whatsoever. Like, she, her home burnt down when she started AEW, so it's not yeah. like it's an easy. It's not like it's been easy for her in the slightest bit. You know, get the help that you can get. Get on the right path. You have the talent in the ring to do what you need to do. It's all the other stuff holding you back. And then I think, you know, wrestling's got to wrestling. Go right at the biggest seat you have. Make the money and the headlines you can make off of it. You know, there's more complicated stuff, and maybe it's better in the process of healing to not carny things up any more than they already are. But yeah, I think know. that's that's part of the issue. But whatever. So. Stay off of uh, Mickey James's tweets. Hopefully, get everything straightened out. Maybe, who knows? Maybe even AEW will have you back. I don't know if if the way that she went out, they will or not. But who knows? Good luck, Evie. It's wrestling. It's wrestling. It's Carney. They never say never. You can always come they back. Brought, from they brought the warrior right. back. They'll you bring know? you back. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> anything can happen in wrestling. Don't worry about it, Byron. I know you're confused by that, but anything no, can I, happen I just, in wrestling. I have a comment that I want to say during the break, and that okay. The well, then let's go the to show. let's go to the break, and then we'll let Byron say his comment off the air that he'll cut back in <laughs> if it goes well for him, because that's how he does things. If it goes well. So, what were you going to say about bastard. Lex Luger? All right, so let's throw it over to... (laughs) Hey, everyone, it's Denise Salcedo here in Lucha Central Central with a reminder of where and when to catch all of the great network content this week. Get the full lineup and listen to all of our shows in the podcast network section of luchacentral.com. Sundays on the Lucha Central Facebook page, world traveled shooter of the camera kind, Jerry Villagrana goes mano a mano with a fellow photographer to throw down about some of their favorite photos they have taken at Lucha Libre events. Monday, Business of the Business returns as Mass Republic President Kevin Kleinrock takes you inside how your favorite Lucha Libre merchandise gets made. On Tuesdays, Mass Mats and Mayhem takes you inside the world of Lucha Underground as they take you weekly through the series with the benefit of hindsight and the benefit of special guests from the groundbreaking series. Check out the premiere video stream every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on the Lucha Central YouTube channel and at luchacentral.com. Then listen to it on your favorite podcast platform every Wednesday. Tuesday nights live, it's Wrestle Boss, where Favi Chulo talks MMA May and pro wrestling with special guests and listener Collins. Visit WrestleBossLive.com Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific to listen live or call in with questions or download the show on podcast platforms on Wednesdays. 
Wednesday nights live on Facebook, it's Spanish show La Mesa de los Margaros, giving you both the news and the cheese made from around the lucha world. Special guests and a whole lot of fun make it one of the most talked about shows in Mexico. Thursdays, it's straight out of the bodega with Papo Esco and PWR promoter Gabriel Ramirez as they have guests from throughout the wrestling world pull up to give an inside look into their careers. From indie standouts to television superstars, each week brings a new name and perspective. On Friday, it's your double dose of Lucha Central weekly podcast, one in English y el otro en español. Lucha Central Weekly is where you'll find all the top stories of the week, both inside and out of the ring from Mexico and anywhere luchadores are in action across the globe. Be sure to subscribe and follow all your favorite Lucha Central Network series on your favorite podcast platforms, either by their own series name or subscribe to the Lucha Central Podcast Network show pages to get all of the shows in one easy feed. And please consider giving a rating to help more fans find the shows that you love. For now, this is Denise Salcedo signing off from Lucha Central Central. Have a great week. And we're back. Um, so there's some other fun little news going on in Byron, wrestling. Byron this week. was talking about the Von Eric claw. That's right. <laughs> the claw. The claw. No, that's a different. That's that's this claw. Um, MLW uh, is going to Vice. Ooh. Did you guys hear about this announcement? I'm Dude, so excited. That is, that, okay, so does that mean we can have a special show like the one where um, Action Bronson would get high and watch shit? Uh, but we get oh, okay. That's this is my pitch. Delicious. This is my oh, pitch. That's good wrestling. <laughs> no, on, yeah, guys, dude. On. Fuck let's, that's good let's wrestling. Treat this, let's treat this with respect. Okay. Okay. What's so your pitch? They do, okay, by the way, so by the way, play, Casey was saying a half hour ago that he never wanted to do this show again. He hates this show, no, and I he doesn't show. want to do it today or tomorrow or next week. So. Bearing that in mind, let's show. listen to his pitch for a new show. Okay, Byron, so that so has the pitch. been Casey's opinion since episode four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I started on three. Are you expecting um, that to change? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so so okay, so what you do is you play MLW normal, right? Like the first time you play it just like a normal show. But then you get a show where Conan and his homies get high and watch it and do their own commentary. Oh, like an MST3K kind of thing? Uh, yes. You can call it yes. keeping it 420. Yes. Oh. Keeping it 420. Love Conan, it. if you're listening, you can have that for free. Just send me a t-shirt or something. I don't know. Doesn't um, Conan do that in every segment that he's on? In um, all, all just the no, but I he mean, records like, from Iran. I mean, everyone else's segments. So, like, you know, it could be like some bootleg MJF, and he could just be laughing, like this motherfucker thinks he's MJF. <laughs> he's a Caribbean MJF. <laughs> That's true. That's true. All well, that I'm means is you pronounce the J differently. That's it. All right. Okay. That's a good pitch. I'm glad we did that. That was definitely. That's worth actually it. a good pitch. Um. So the thing with MLW, uh, look, they're wrapping up their fusion season right now. They're going to probably tie up the storylines they've got going. And there's some interesting okay. stuff with Azteca Underground going on right now with Selena having fallen out of favor with Los Parks and El Jefe. Whatever. How the fuck do you fall out of favor means. with Los Parks? They're um, the nicest people in the world. Yeah. You messed up there. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Um, but I think, I think that if there is anything bigger going on with, with Lucha Underground stuff, related to selena i'm thinking that this july 10th event that they are going to do which is probably going to kick off the whole vice run for mlw may have some you know pointers in the direction of what is actually going to happen there um i think I that they're, so. they're playing towards a storyline and you know there's some interesting things going going on there and i think that they're building up to whatever they had planned is I, I would expect by midsummer we're gonna see what it is. Now you're probably not gonna Hopefully. see it before then because what they're doing is they're gang taping all the MLW fusions mm -hmm. that are gonna get them through the next month. I think they have a couple of tapings left, and then they're gonna basically go on break until the big event. And I doubt that they will do any of the reveals during that stuff because that stuff will get out because it's all taped. So right, I think right. the July 10th event, uh, which I believe is happening in Philly, um, is gonna be. Yeah. You, tickets have just gone on sale also, which 
We it's funny go. because the big announcement was the Vice thing, but I think the bigger announcement is that Court Bauer has been putting all his eggs in this July basket of really doing whatever he's been planning for the last couple of years, I think is really coming to fruition. I think you're seeing that by, they basically took the deal that new Japan turned down with vice. Yeah. They new turned, Japan down turned this deal down, which makes me also wonder how probationary the MLW thing is. How many, how many oh. eggs they should throw in that basket because all new of Japan, them, because they're on BN we, right now. And you, so we're going to see, yeah. are we going to see dark side of the ring of Kensuke Sasaki killing the fucking student of the dojo and them <laughs> and uh, them covering it up now? Probably. That I, happens. I, I would, I, I would just say yes to that. Not too familiar with any of the details, but I'm going to confirm. Yes. And uh, no, MLW is part of vice wanting to double down on the wrestling and have a lead in for the dark side of the ring shows, which are, well, that fantastic. is what it is. It is. It'll either, it'll, mm -hmm. I think it'll be the roll out. I think it's going to come after the show. So dark side will premiere and then they'll get people to stick around by having MLW. But here's the thing I'm excited yeah. about. I think this is court Bauer's chance to finally try to fill Paulie's shoes. He was always yeah. a Paulie Mark and he always Who wanted to be though? involved in ECW and, and he tried to get involved with ECW, but it was literally at like the last pay-per-view and Polly was like yeah. losing his shit and everything was going sideways. <laughs> and then I think they, they crossed paths briefly when court worked at, at SmackDown or wherever he worked for 10 days or whatever before Vince probably air, air, air fire! or whatever. Vince do the puke, do him. the puke thing. Every time you he's, mention him, he's got a puke. Hey, hey pal, hey pal, try not to get any on my desk on your way out. Huh? Uh, oh poor draws uh before um, you leave court there's something i gotta have you do oh try not man. to get any on my desk huh yeah uh but yeah so yeah. look i i'm excited for those guys i'm excited for court here's a guy who's you know and if you've watched this show you've known i've disagreed with him like i thought that his inside information on lucha underground tended to be uh extremely off from time to time and we it's because uh, his source only worked three quarters of the first season correct and we uh and we corrected uh him on a few occasions <laughs> and i hope that you know that was seen as polite correction even though it wasn't it um, wasn't we have an attitude <laughs> and we we take no guff from anyone that is so so very no. very true but but look, here's a guy who's been in business for a long time. I think that this is his chance to really do something uh, uh, to be the TVMA wrestling promotion, to be the ones on the edge, to bring oh, back yeah. the, the curse words, the racier stuff, to some, not be as politically correct. Fucks. I think he's going to piss some people off with it. I think it's warranted. I think it's time for that in wrestling. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I think the snowflakes are going to hate what he's going to do. He's going to be the anti ring of honor. They don't watch uh, Vice. They don't watch Vice anyway. It's all good. It's all the good. snowflakes are going to get rid of the liberal media TVs. Well, and the people who are watching Vice are more the old school ECW WCW right. fans, and they're watching Dark Side of the Ring. And I think this will be a great lead in for that. And I think it's going to do. I don't think it's going to do like blockbuster numbers. That's going to shake up the wrestling game by any stretch of the imagination, it's going to do better than what MLW is doing now. And we've said on the yeah. show that like, it's not a bad product, especially for what they've got and how they're doing it. Yeah. They put I wish... together a good show for, you know, and, and it reminds me of old ECW. It's like five guys in a room making a TV show and just doing it. If I was still in New York, I would be pushing to try and work for MLW. Yeah. You know? I, like I, mean, I, I know I worked with someone who is currently working with court on MLW stuff. I guess I don't I think he's been doing that since our show um got canceled. Right. Well, excuse me, sir. Because I have something that I'd like to say if you think this show is going to be a success on the Vice Network. And that is fuck you, you're wrong. Because <laughs> it needs to be on TNN, the Nashville Network. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the Friday night Royal Zone. I mean, Along eventually that was the, Roller Jam. That was the National Network. Eventually, though, right, Polly? Look, you can call a spade a spade, and Whoa, I don't know what no, else to say. Whoa. But this is the same channel. Shovel. You can shovel. call it. You can call it Spike TV if you want. But come on. You could. You could. You know, but you could. You could down the road always just put it on Sci Fi Channel. I mean, that'd be. But a you great know what home. I'd say if you put it on the Sci Fi Channel, Justin. What's that? Fuck you, you're wrong. 
<laughs> but no, even, so even with Kelly <laughs> Kelly, even with Kelly Kelly, I'd still be wrong. Mm. Even with the zombie and Mordecai, I mean <laughs> Kevin Thorne. Vampires. Um, I want to talk quickly about um um just they're not vampires. They live the vampire lifestyle. They Justin. do live the vampire lifestyle. Um, I want to talk quickly about NXT. I don't really care about this week's episode, but I want to say um, that. Congr- oh, hold on, Justin, one second for NXT. Moment of silence. I just want us all to send our positive vibes and our congratulations to Kushida for winning the cruiserweight title once again. We did it last week. I just wanted to do it again. Hey. Uh- I think we we should applaud the time splitter for for really you know. Here's the thing about NXT. Thing. Here's and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong. I think NXT is deliberately actually exactly where it was meant to be, including the Santos Escobar thing. I think it's actually a very good sign for Santos. I think he did what he was supposed to do. He elevated that belt. He brought it back yeah. into being a main NXT belt instead of just this 205 random thing that, that Vince could care less about. I think he solidified that for the rest of the locker room. I and I think, think Vince the reward is that it. they need him a- in the top program. I think that literally that's him graduating from being a cruiserweight. He got his WrestleMania moment. They finished off his storyline of having elevated this title. And now I think he's going to get to be a top guy. And I think eventually what they're heading to is the feud with Cross, and I think it's going to play out over a long period of time. I think you know Santos is going to be looked at as a heavyweight now for for the rest of his NXT career, and he's going to feud with Cross. And I think that eventually Cross is going to drop to Santos and move up to the main roster. And I think it's actually a very very good sign for Santos because I think that he has been the one picked to secede Cross when he's done. Um, and can I, I think- can I beef on Cross when you're done? Yeah. Please remind go, me. No, that's go go now. Beef. Okay, okay. Cross, I love you. I love you. You know that. I, I oh, the you. next part person. after this is never good. <laughs> okay, he he responded to one of my tweets with a gif. You know, it was a gif of Abismo Negro setting another person on fire. Completely fine. Right. Completely fine. He he responded to it and said, "Lady Scarlet, no." Because it seems like something she would do. And over a hundred people like it blew up my shit. Over a hundred people liking it that can't see my original tweet because I'm on a private account and they can't see it. So just because he tweeted something, they liked it. And I'm like, really? You can't even see my tweet. Really? It's not this really is what happens. It's just, it's just weird. So he was I mean, trying to test- give you the rub. He probably doesn't no, it's realize testament, it's account. testament to the power of the cross cult is what it is. Because what is the man, he doing? That looks like he's, he's masturbating. Thing. Okay. No, was- yeah, he's masturbating. His, so, his penis is where he's looking. So cross no, blew point. up your scene and that's a testament to how over he is. Yeah, yeah, which is yeah. also tested. So I guess it's not. I guess it's not really a beef. It was just weird to keep getting the beeps and thinking like someone was saying, "Hey, Casey, we found you that Vader action figure we're looking for." <laughs> now here's no one found another, me the Vader action. That's when you mute the response. Uh, yeah. I learned that after about ninety nine tweets. Here's another thing to also bring to to point out and to bring up um, uh, a fellow two hundred five champion, cruiserweight champion, who also um, held the belt and helped it. You know bring some prestige back to it for an almost equally long amount of time was TJ never pinned, was never pinned. And to quote someone who knows what he's talking about, uh, climbing a ladder fast doesn't make you a good wrestler. Wow. So when Are we're looking just trying at, to make me mad, when we're looking at successors to cross, I just, I don't think the pickings are slim. You know what I mean? Wow. I mean, I think that there's a lot of choices up there, but I think what's going to happen is you're going to see you're going to see these guys that they've been pushing to, to the top of the mid card get a chance to feud with Cross. Cross is going to win, but it's going to elevate a lot of these guys. It's going to ele- elevate Bronson Pincho. Isn't that his name? Bronson's Casey? great. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The, the human yeah, Kaijo Bronson Pincho. It's out of this city. <laughs> Famed. Home renovation TV. I think star, it's going to elevate Pinto. Dexter Loomis. In fact, I, I can't wait to see a little bit of uh, cross Dexter Loomis feud. I think that's going to be good times. Um, I'm excited I, for Kyle O'Reilly, man. I, I think don't be ridiculous. Ball. Don't be ridiculous, Byron. Don't Look, I ridiculous. like the new. I like the new Kylo gimmick. I I I, I was feeling it. He's the uh, he's the orange Cassidy of, of WWE Byron. now. Well, it's new to everyone. Uh, he's, he's the son of Darth Vader. Uh, 
of eight, Daffy, not Daffy. Of Hannon. Yeah. Hannan. Isn't Kylo, he the- Kylo's, Kylo's new gimmick. Oh, yeah, Kylo uh, Ren. I get it. Oh, You're making a joke. Oh. What were you saying, Jim? Uh, God damn it. First, first of all, uh, Kylo Ren is not Darth Vader's son. Uh, <laughs> I know I messed up that. <laughs> nah, he so much I care about the new Star Wars thing. Since Marvel uh, fucked it up. Why is Weave so grumpy? It was a Marvel like four in the busy. morning. Jesus Christ. Uh, but I was saying I'm Marvel. that uh, this, isn't a, this is not a new Kylo Riley for people who have been following his career. This is PWG Kylo Riley. You know, a little bit of sleazy Kyle in there that we're finally seeing in NXT because he's no longer in Undisputed Era. The closest we got to see it previously is just whenever he would do the air guitar with the belt. But now we get to see full on sleazy, cool Kyle. And honestly, it's so People much follow better. Kyle, Kyle and Riley's career? It, it's, yes, a few of them do. Uh, it's I so much Kyle. better already than him trying to cut promos as this, oh, God. this you know, you yeah. tough guy like, from four or five weeks ago where he just sounded like yeah. squeaky and sad. And it was like, oh my God, whoever wrote this or made him do this, this is not this person. His you can't do was, this. This his, is. This is like, it's, uh, I was just immediately happy. I was like, oh my God, they turned the page so fast on this. Thank you, because yeah. that poor guy, you were burying him, trying to make him do things that did not feel natural to who he is at all. And this is already 10 million times better. What yeah, are you that, first, that first program with Finn, where uh, Adam Cole stepped up, stepped aside and let Kyle O'Reilly even cut the first, like head the first promo segment for UE was just and i'm rooting for him and and all that but it was just not it was not him no this is definitely this this like i don't quite get because i haven't seen the pwg stuff i don't quite get uh everything that he's doing right now but but i'm there for it you know what are you doing with that what is that deal all about what do you got is this more lucha leather just a bullet show is brought to you by me and his wallet which he is going to expertly show you in the most lackluster fashion. It's like four in the morning for me, Floaf Byron. Take it easy on the guy. No, we're doing an ASMR audio um, wallet reveal. For he audio lives in foul mouth England. It's it's understandable. Uh, people are going to find me considering how often he's just showing something some so Byron, Byron might recognize something he hasn't seen in a while. A prison wallet? Byron recognizes that completely. I've never been to prison yeah. and you'll never take yeah. me there. Yeah, yeah, he's um he's lubricated mine with his tongue. Oh wow. Why would you pocket, why Byron. would you want that, Casey? Byron, you can go back to the, the thing. I was asleep. No, this is this is thrilling. I was a sleepy fucking creeper. Jesus Christ. Whoa, why I is that all up. different? There we I go. eventually woke up. Wow. Yeah. We have um, options. The other thing I woke up with a about NXT. And I, I, I'm curious to know you guys' thoughts. I missed the Lucha Underground last week with my one of my favorite matches of all time with Ty and Cage. But we that's get, beside the point. No, 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 no. no, no. So get, 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 get. I did too. I, I did too. Don't worry. I did We're too. moving I on. This week, everyone knows how we feel about it. It's a great match. That was a great Taya promo. Is the Can I interrupt you and steal the point you're about to make? It sure. sure. The Frankie Monet pit with EO was pretty cool. By the way, I'm with EO. Cats rule. No, listen. The 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 point of the the whole Taya thing is again. NXT is exactly where it should be right now. I think this is all very, very intentional and very well done to get where they need to be. Now, how they they execute from here is a big deal. But, you know, you've brought Taya in as Frankie Monet, not however you spelled it in our write-up last week, because that typo never did get fixed, by the way, Byron. Um, I fixed everything. He, he's, he wrote Kazarian. It said Frankie Mag- Magnet or something. It was It's still Magnet. wrong. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, it's fixed on the YouTube version, I think, and not on the audio. I blame Kevin Klein. I sent the email to fix too. it, and the YouTube is one the only one that I have access and to. Listen, it's fine. Anyway, yeah. so uh, I think she's in the right place. I think what you're gonna get here is Taya's gonna go over on EO now. I think that's you know gonna be what happens, so she can take a break, and maybe there'll be one last little bit of Gonzalez as, on the way out the door for her as well. But I think it's going to elevate Taya into that program. But then you're not going to see Taya going and challenging for the title immediately, I don't think. I think what you're going to see is her building up some of the rest of the roster and then establishing what the top tier of the female division is. And they're going to use Taya to do that. And then 
maybe SummerSlam time or maybe a little bit after they'll propel Taya into the title picture, I think. Uh, Frankie, I'm sorry. I got to get used to that. Um, I but wonder. I think it's the right. I think it's absolutely the right call. It's the best use of her, um, and, and get her into that program. What do you guys think? I Someone don't care. Else. I don't care. I don't like podcasting. Why are we talking about this shit? God damn it! I watch Lucha Underground. I don't watch NXT. I didn't watch Frankie Kazarian wrestling. Fucking Io Shirai. I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't watch it. I don't care. You wanted someone else to say something, Byron. Are you fucking happy? No, not really. That I was hoping it would so go better see, than Jim, that. So you can see, Jim, things have changed. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Jim. Perhaps do you have something to say? Uh, I don't know about the trajectory that Justin was talking about, but I do see her eventually becoming uh, NXT Women's Champion. I don't think it'll happen as soon as you think. Like. I think SummerSlam is way too soon for her. No, but I think that's when she'll start to be in that sphere. I don't think they'll put her in that sphere before then. I don't know that she'll get the belt for a year or more. Her and LA Knight are kind of in the same spot, I think. Yeah, the they pretty much are. LA Knight? Eli Drake. Eli Drake. Eli Eli Drake. I don't, he's great. It's is who Drake is. Maverick's yeah. brother. He's Scott Steiner's partner. Yeah, dude. <laughs> more like... Uh, Eli trash. <laughs> exactly. Um, dude, I'm telling you 10 years from now, Casey, when you're still mad about doing this podcast and we're doing it anyway, you're going to be doing Eli Drake impressions. I swear to God. <laughs> oh God. I'll be saying, who the fuck am I? Who the fuck am I? <laughs> you dummy. I think I just made Casey want to slit his wrist. I'm so sorry. All Let right. Let me talk to you. <laughs> once, He's once so a week, good. Once a week. Once a week. Oh, I know. God. I got nothing to say about That's AEW it. this week. Uh, Lou, uh, no, look, bro, have, can, have, we, have, can we talk about how shitty Mortal Kombat is? No, we can't. But you something. know what? If you want to hear how shitty Mortal Kombat is, listen to my other podcast. The Stay one that I enjoy till after doing. the break. I think I made the. I'm, I was glad when you said that. Wow, that was loud. I was glad when you said that that I made the choice to watch the last episode of uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I almost, oh, called, cool I almost called it the dog? other end title name. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, no spoilers, no spoilers. Um, yeah, I was happy that I watched that instead of Mortal Kombat because we had a choice last night. I'm yeah. going to still watch Mortal Kombat tonight. I wish I was watching Shang-Chi instead, even though I that heard, one poster. I heard a lot of people said Mortal fat. Kombat was good, though, Case. Yeah. A lot of people say a lot of stupid fucking shit. Was Even it just not gory it enough? Or what, what was the what no, was the major? It, you don't have to tell okay. me your whole thing from your other Do podcast. You, Everybody listen to another miserable podcast and hear the whole deal. But I just want to know what, yeah, what was the sticking I'm recording point, that tomorrow. Okay. okay um, you know what a Mary Sue is? Yes. But tell everyone else. Yeah. Okay. So Mary Sue is when someone writes fan fiction shittily. <laughs> and they introduce a new character that's better than everyone else. And um, super powerful, and everyone likes them. And uh, this new character, like, how could everyone get along without them? This movie introduces a new character, uh, Kolya, who is the epitome of a Mary Sue. And um, I can't get too deep into it without spoiling. Um, but let's just say they decided to save Johnny Cage for the sequel that hopefully will never happen. But instead, they introduce a new character whose power is getting beat up harder than everyone else. And it, until he makes a shirt, he makes a shirt that gives him armor. He kind of has the bishop power. I think his power is that he gets a shit beat out of him and he can reflect it back at you. But they're not really clear about yeah, that. that hasn't uh, been done. No, but I mean, um, way to get something that no one would ever want to play in the game from a character that doesn't exist in any of the games. So they can't even like make money off of adding him into the game now. Um, but yeah, Jesus fucking Christ. It was everything I hate about the DC movies, just with Mortal Kombat characters instead of DC characters. That's like wow. the best way I could put it. Yeah. I'm so was, excited to see this now. Oh God. Watch the cartoon <laughs> one first, the animated Scorpion's mm. Revenge. That's also on HBO max. That's actually good. That's and the only other rated R uh, Mortal Kombat film, so to speak. And it's great. Joel McHale is Johnny Cage. I shouldn't have to say anything more oh. than that. I'll watch that. I, noticed, I noticed that HBO Max dumped everything Mortal Kombat they could get their hands on on the platform this week. So I'll have to check that out for sure. Because I actually liked the 90s movie. I, you know, yeah. it was PG and it was misdirected at that point, but I actually liked what it. A Mortal soundtrack. Kombat. What a soundtrack. 
Oh, tremendous soundtrack. Yeah, Mortal Kombat great. Annihilation. One was just an amalgamation of, hey, let's just put this person in here. And see okay. what so yeah, we got to give yeah, an official Annihilation score, was Casey. Terrible. An official score of between one and Street Fighter. Okay, so I gave it a one on Letterboxd out of five, okay? And Street Fighter at least had the great line of Colonel Guile when they said, Colonel Guile, have you lost your mind? No, you lost your balls. <laughs> right there. Best line in cinematic history right there. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, Byron, here's what we're going to do. Let's do this. Let's take another quick break. Let's come back and talk about some Lucha Underground. And then in the last segment, we'll have Casey unbox some shit. I, well, I have AEW stuff to say. Oh, Jesus oh, No one cares about AEW. Come on. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Penta got a translator. What else? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey look. No, nah, dog. Penta versus Orange Cassidy. Who That's suggested week, that though, on right? this show? Yes, you're welcome, Antoine. Maybe you can start selling those Pinche Naranja shirts that I said will make he you He listens of to the show. We already yeah. know that he gets all his good ideas for the show. So, if Byron, unless you're going to give, are you going to give Tony a good oh, idea shit. right now? Is that uh, why I've been going wrong with, with his football team? I should be giving yes. him tips on his football team. Yes, you should. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I think it's really cool. Uh, the His Alex, his um, translator dude, manager dude. Um, I love that. Was guy. like he's like one of us. He's a super fan. Yeah, and yeah. But he translates. He translates like hobbies. an asshole. Well, here's the thing. He also Great. he wants. He's not. He's still new on the job. He is he's not censoring. translating. He, is he not, listens no, to the show, guys. You remember five weeks ago on the show when we were laughing about the translation of Pentagon from Lucha Underground, and then all of a sudden, five weeks later, it's on <sighs> AEW. Yes. Big surprise! Look, I, yeah. I know, I know so, what Chinga to Puta Madre means. He knows what it means, but he did not say that. He did not say that to the audience. It's no a great gag. I'm glad they stole it from us. <laughs> your your mother and your mother sucks. Sucks what? Finish the translation. Anyway, I'm super stoked for him um, because. I was stoked when he just got the announcing gig at the Spanish table for AEW. I thought that was great. And now he's just living out all of our dreams and and excelling. He's and doing he such a great job. he was a member job. of the Dark Order, and now he's upgraded to the cooler team. Fucking Lucha Bros. Dead Triangle. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Triangle de la muerte. You, you know. Um, Let's go to the break. Dark, dark Order. They should get me to do a um, no, no Johnny. No I'd Johnny. No Johnny. No Johnny, no order. That's all so, I'm saying. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I'm really, uh, whatever. I'm enjoying it. I can't wait to see Johnny Silver come back and then lose to Cody his first match. Back no, by stop it. Because that's only, what's going to happen. He can only by lose to him if he breaks his arm first, damn it. Oh, I got yeah. AEW news. I, and I, I'm like, okay, I, I don't want to blow this dude's spot up. But what? the Mark Carano stuff came out with, with, and then one, his, one of his ex-flames started tweeting uh, trash about him, which was kind of funny, right? But then someone else was like, hey, is this the is this the Billy Gunn side piece that's tweeting about Mark Carano? And it was. <laughs> and I don't know if you're familiar, and I'm not going to spread. I'm not going to. Whatever. He's, he's not, he already is. Yeah. I love, I love Billy Gunn. So just. No, no hit, one loves Billy Gunn. Just hit me up at the DM. If Even you want to know the words to Google to hear all the really great You're trying to get yourself story. a side face, sir. Yeah. I'm trying Look, to get we're not more talking followers. About, we're not talking about the real AEW news because this is going to air on Tuesday and it's going to happen tomorrow. But I want everyone's prediction anyway because now it's just funny to me. Is yeah. Rich Swan or Kenny Omega going to walk away with both belts or are they going to uh, schmoz the whole thing into nothingness? It's going to be, gonna be schmoz, on, dumb schmoz shit. City, man. Rich Swan, Champ Champ. No, Rich uh, one double champ. All, all I know is uh, when, when, major, when Rich the major is done. Podcast, what? When Rich is done beating be Kenny. When Rich is done beating Kenny, he's gonna slap Don in the face, pick up the triple A belt as well, and walk out and dance out of the arena. You and book wrestling me. like you're Zack Schneider. They do AEW paid advertisements, paid advertisements every week on Impact. Yeah, and they're great. What do they What do they do for impact on Dynamite? Nothing. Why Nothing. would they? Dynamite. Why would they, Dynamite. Why would they give, why oh, would they you give know what? You know what impact could do on Dynamite, Dynamite? Can't afford the paid the paid advertisement. No, no. You know what Dynamite could That's do? True. Dynamite. Uh, you know, uh, 
Impact should go on to Dynamite and they should promote, I don't know, the AAA Mega Championship belt. How about yeah, that? that? We Rich should, would be we the should unofficial fucking, champ. Should fucking blow it up with Dynamite. Kenny, Kenny's going to collect a bunch of belts and hang them in his closet and no one's even going to know that he has them. I think I a, that I is question. the goal of the storyline. I have a question. Yeah, we're going to... I have, a yeah, I have a question. I have a question. So, do the Good Brothers get paid by Tony? Yes, they're they're double dipping. Yeah, they have to have an appearance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're appearance. getting a, they're getting appearance fees for yeah. for both. Yeah, wow. And it's part of how the whole thing is working out and how they're Don keeping is probably them happy. Too. Yeah, yeah. They're all sharing. They're all sharing. Look, well, Rich Tony's a money mark. Enough. Tony's a money mark. All the yeah. other promotions are like, sure, we'll work with you, Tony, but you know how we do this, right? You've got to pay us. <laughs> He's a money mark. It's great, though. I don't mind it. It's fine. I would love anyway, to see a blood sport match on Dynamite. Byron, let's take this break and talk about this episode of Lucha Underground before Casey literally throws a spear through the screen and screams, get over here at you. That's we got racist. a full night to play, baby. All right, we'll be right back. Lucha-masks.com, in partnership with Mass Republic, give you personal protective masks to keep you Lucha strong in the fight versus COVID-19. With world-class luchadors Blue Demon Jr., the Lucha Brothers, L.A. Park, Ultimo Dragon, Kane Velasquez, Conan, and so much more. Head to lucha-masks.com and you too can become a masked warrior. Lucha-masks.com, powered by Pro Wrestling Revolution. And we're back. We're talking about Lucha Underground Penises. Season 2, Episode 8, Life After Death, this week in our Lucha Underground mm. Rewind. I can't say this word. I say this word like Byron says, Salmon. The vignette. The the L's in there for a reason. Uh, Yeah, you know, more like Pucha Underground Season Poo. Wow. You love this one. You wanted to talk about it last week. Yeah, Um, I forgot everything that happened now. Katrina sometimes wonders if she should have stayed loyal to Phoenix. Oh my God, and, what a great uh, opening I, segment. Accepted I her wonder, fate, and then she uh, could be together ruling the temple with Phoenix. Justin, and then, I wonder if I should have chose you. I thought Mil she was way Muertes. better in this one. Yeah. This wasn't as bad as like the Mil Muertes one she did. I felt I've like been this working was on that impression Carly. for months. God okay, do it again. It. Do it again. No, I'm, do it again. Done. I'm done. No, okay. All right. Okay. I'm sorry. We're all being rude. Every single one of us owes you an apology. And go ahead, dude, do the impersonation. I refuse. I refuse. Go ahead and do it. We give you the respect you deserve. This is what you deserve. Bye, Ray. And we're back. Hey, yeah, okay, that's <laughs> enough of that. <laughs> you guys are dicks. <laughs> you will bring me back to life. No, I so don't. I was gonna push it. Yeah. But I thought it was great. It's just it's that it's that cinematic melodrama that Lucha Underground. This is this is one of those expensive vignettes, by the way. It was, and 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 it was like there was a, a kissing thing, a lot of basil. There was a lot. Hey baby, it was, was there tongue? In, was there tongue involved there? So I know they had to shoot Phoenix from the waist up for a reason. I was watching it like this. I mean, I didn't want to really, you know. I was. Censoring. It is unfair to shoot. Is that what you pretend it was you? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and see. assume that the the stone wasn't the only thing hard in that scene. Yeah, yeah. 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 Jimmy's we, back, y'all. Got a little, <laughs> got a little like, extra animo in there. Um, <sighs> remember when he was yeah. a zombie? I like yeah. these scenes. Hey, speaking of our fine, our, our yeah. fine friend uh, Eva Lise, this <laughs> episode has a trios championship match. Between the unlikely oh. trio versus the disciples of is that how you say that disciples of Diaz disciples of this is, a, this is this is the comedy we're resorting to on this podcast now. Look, uh, this was a, a lose. If they lost, they left the temple, and we were cheering for them. We're like, oh, don't lose. Now I'm just like, get the fuck out of here, son of havoc. You suck. Yeah, but we couldn't have lost Angelico, so we had uh, to cheer. Yeah, I know. Even though we know, lost Angelico anyway, they could, for, they could for have the just they could have just said, "Hey, man, how about the person who gets pinned has to leave forever?" No, no, uh-huh. Son of Havoc uh-huh. was he had a really great place on this show. No, that was Son of Madness, bro. You got him confused again. Wow, let's never talk about that. Was his position 
crying in the bathroom after you made so, him cry. Guys, I'm a little. We I'm made him cry. Bit, I'm a little bit upside down on the space time continuum. I just saw the end of Interstellar recently, and so I'm a little, you know, all over the place. I love uh, that movie. I love it too. Go and, for it. Uh, and uh, so at the end of this match, Elise is limping. Is this where she broke her ankle a second time? No. That's, I don't think, I don't so. think so. No, nothing broken. No. I'm pretty sure that it wasn't a title match of some sort. Okay, it was yeah. She broke it again after she already cut the angle with Katrina. So that was season three. Yeah, because I remember three. EVW wow. saying that like, oh yeah, I was so thrilled that we put the belts back on all three of these people that are made out of glass. <laughs> <laughs> No, Son of Havoc wasn't made out of glass, but he did break Jack. His, his heart was when you start chanting. Yeah, his his heart, his heart was. Yeah, yeah. Could you and imagine, feel, dude? Everybody loves Matt Dog Cross so much. Like he's yeah. a, he's no. actually just the nicest guy in the world. He's so affable and he does wrestling. I don't butt like anyone from then, Cleveland. Could you oh, imagine you though? Son oh. of a bitch. <laughs> now it's personal. But can you imagine this? This poor guy, he wears his heart on his sleeve. He loves the business <laughs> in the most sincerest, on. purest, you know, form. He's a great guy and he just wants to go out there. He wants to wrestle and do it for the fans and he loves the business and he tries hard. Dude, 64% of what and, he's done was really, really good. And then the rest of it was that ladder match. He shows up and he overperforms <sighs> and the fans help carry him to uh, uh to be an established character on the show he's supposed to be kind of like Vinny Massaro-esque you know no offense to Vinny but just to give you a comparison if I was Vinny I'd be really offended right now I would punch no, you I love the the, I love Vinny I, was... I love Vinny and like also like to be honest I think Vinny's a better wrestler and so then um so he works himself up he's a former trios champ and then he gets a gift of the gods ladder match against Pentagon Dark at a Ultimo Lucha. He gets a gimmick match for a belt against the biggest Lucha Underground star at the, one of their Same biggest the time, Jim, shows. By the way. He has, you know, this huge opportunity. This is great. Sure, he's going to do the favors. But this, imagine where you're coming from. And you get this huge, great thing, and he's so excited about this opportunity. He goes out there and he does this match where he puts himself at even more risk than he already does on a daily basis in the ring. And then he puts his ear out to the crowd and he hears, Die, Matt Cross, die. No, that's not what we were saying. We were saying, Fuck you, Havoc, is what we were saying. And you were Correct. saying it too. But Mr. High Horse, you were saying it too. Look, but it was our responsibility because we were the I guys may that have put him over that in the chant, first place. But you chanted it with me, okay? We we have no one to blame but ourselves because we let him get over in the first place, and then you know sometimes things have to be taken away. <laughs> <laughs> like my joy for doing this show. All um, right, well, let's see if this brings you back some joy. Okay. Vignette number two, where um, we find out that Puma must be training with Sexy Star because he can now oh. punch through a okay. yeah. heavy bag. That was this cool. does make me happy because we got to see Prince Puma punching a bag and the bag doesn't move at Not all. Not at all. Johnny Mundo comes up, barely taps it, gives it a love tap. That bag's swinging like a motherfucker from his superhuman strength. Funny how that works. So they had to gimmick that bag to make it look like Puma could hurt it. And that wasn't real? He, he punches his hands through it uh, by punching the part of the bag that you're not supposed to even punch. Um, the tape's part, yeah. Yeah, yeah but that's not uh, his fault. That's... It, all high up. Yeah, and, it, and his arm probably got stuck. And I think it would have been awesome if when his arm got stuck there, Pentagon came up and set him on fire. I was going to say break his <laughs> arm, but set him on fire. You know why you're not supposed to punch that part of the bag and why they tape it? It's typically taped, um, A, so that when people do come in and work jabs, that the bag isn't, doing a weird misshapen thing and also because when you're uppercutting if you have the bag taped there it doesn't misform the bag up at the top so yeah yes you're not yeah, really yeah. supposed you're not supposed to ever throw like a big overhand right through Dude, that i know all of, i know all about that out. shit see see these yeah, knuckles yeah. Yeah, no yeah, you yeah, don't because yeah, yeah. that's from hitting that bitch in the eye we all have so but so i mean it's also in, uh, Byron in the ass be on the mat take it easy also that's it's up, the tape is a good spot to hide a giant hole in the punching bag so, um, but I also thought it was great because even before 
Puma can speak. By the way, another scene in which it's 80% dialogue, but only one person doing it. He can't and even then, say, he can't even cry for help when his hand's stuck in the punching bag. <laughs> he's not even allowed to growl on his own. He can't sound like he's mad. They have to sound effect an actual. Oh. They took out the Paducah growl? Yeah. No, they put the in fucking growl. Matanza growls for him. Oh. Yeah. oh, my God. By the way, I love the Matanza reveal covered in blood. That's a great, like, oh, yeah. this guy's about to wrestle with everyone. The guy covered in blood who just murdered a room full of people. Right. Great. That's Wait, having- you're skipping ahead again, Byron. Why do you always do this? Yeah. Hey, Jimmy, I've got a question for you. Are you super excited? That Dragon Azteca Jr. is coming to the temple? I mean, hey. hey, if you're just handing out invitations, we finally get to see Dragon Azteca Jr. in the temple. And oh, Ray. Oh. Uh, well, yeah, and that's the Ray. funny part. I got an invitation, like, too. We're pumped. we're pumped. Dragon Azteca's coming. This awesome wrestler we've heard all about. Oh, and by the way, uh, Ray Mysterio's coming, too. That's not going to overshadow your debut or anything. You can just... just- just the biggest Latino star in the entire business well, for the last 50 cool years because, uh, is coming to like, it's no, cool. no Matanza, Matanza took care of all of them. Um, I have an invitation here too. Oh, no, wait, to? it's, it's an autograph of Erwin R. Scheister. <laughs> My bad. I yeah. signed Erwin R. Scheister and not Mike Rotunda. Uh, uh, it's signed IRS only. He signed Just three IRS. letters. Yeah. It's the best <laughs> autograph I've ever seen. Freaking genius. Oh, oh! That you know was, what, though? Hey, you that know what? Uh, that was great, though. Uh, how Ray put Dragon Azteca Jr. in his place. Like, you know how I've been helping you feel like the man for like the past few weeks, <laughs> and just casually, just was like, "By the way, everything you've been working for is gonna mean nothing." Oh yeah, and uh, to win, you have to beat me. Also, may, uh, may the be- may the best man win. The the unproven rookie says to the Hall of Fame yeah. legend. That was a little, that was a little, uh, did I miss little, a match or are there really four vignettes in a row? There's four, no, vignettes, there in four a row. vignettes in a row. Wow. So Mill just decides to off one of the disciples. Who was it? Who bit the bullet? Oh, he didn't kill him though. Um, this yeah, wasn't the death scene. Oh, yeah. Um, death I think scene. originally they intended to kill Sinestro here because he looks really fucking dead at the end, but this isn't when they killed him. Okay. Because yeah. Katrina um, was just kind of like easy, dude. Easy. No, because remember he rips two of their hearts out, and then he gives them to like Sinestro, and then he's right. alone for a while, and then he eventually rips his heart out. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Spoiler: I mean, right. they're basically just putties from Power Rangers, anyway, right? <laughs> Byron doesn't get that at all, does he? No, no he doesn't. It. I've seen the show. They literally filmed it right next to our house, um, and. I've seen the show. Okay, so now, Byron, now (laughs) is when you're supposed to talk about the Matanza thing. We got to cut the break, apparently. Byron, this is where you're supposed to talk about. No, did somebody say the Luger thing again? Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) No, everyone is still alive in that photo, Byron. We don't have to go to break. What is it signed with? (laughs) Tell me me about Matanza. Look at him smile, knowing the amount of pills he has in his home. <laughs> talking about how bodies he's got in his basement. His name was a play on Lex Luthor. It's not like people didn't know he was eventually going to be the bad guy. <laughs> so, um, so Dario and um, Black Otis have a new Lucha Temple, and the notable thing about this one, it's cool. I love these scenes, and Dario's a great actor. Uh, excuse me, Byron. Uh, no, you, you shut the fuck up. Um, see, <laughs> what? What's Lotus, the matter, I, you? Lotus, I, I have to tell you the story of this uh, new temple. You see, um, this new temple is uh, founded on one thing to appease the Aztec gods, and that is butt fucking. And, and you see, uh, so they go into the, the, the container with my brother, and then he butt fucks them to death. And you see, that is why they call him Matanza, because that is what he does to the butthole. Okay. To the cool. So I thought it was cool I mean, that on the outside of this building, it, building, they still had it labeled temple and they had the Lucha symbol. Stencils. Yes. Stencils. I also yeah. like how yeah. it's 375 miles away around the corner. Right. So That's where exactly. Where 375 in, miles have put it? Was that like Palmdale? Where is that? Uh, like Barstow. Barstow, Barstow probably. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Like Zizix Road. They, they stopped no. at Zizix Road and made a new temple. 
Barstow. <laughs> yeah, so Dude. if it's Barstow, that's where you're you're getting near the five five nine BTW. It's 20, 27 Palms or whatever that place is called. No, that's the other way. That's like Palm Springs. That's by, yeah. that's yeah. Well, I'm just thinking um, where the 375 miles from, from Boyle Heights. I mean, is I actually think 375 miles is way farther, and that's like Las Vegas. Mm, maybe no because it takes like four and a half hours i think vegas is, is almost 450 460 miles i'm telling you it's zizix road it's, they stopped it's on about, road hold on 375 miles that's like six hours away driving yeah, well, i don't know six, if, you if you drive like if you drive like you so they were in like saint george Grandma. utah or wherever that is anyway who cares? tahoe all yeah. we know is we got Hit to see that MMS 75. Why was Matanza that. not bloody like this just all the time? Like, could they not because have just gimmicked the costume to always be this just drenched in blood? That you know what? Oh, originally, no. originally they did, but someone punched a window and they couldn't tell how much blood he was losing and they had to stop. They <laughs> might want to refilm that match. <laughs> uh, just saying. That's the funniest cop story in all of history, by the way. If you haven't heard it, uh, just listen back. So to it's show. only funny because he was okay. It's only funny because right, he was okay. right, right, I mean, right. it still right, would have so been funny, but here's what to I want to like know. I want uh, I want Meef and Jimmy's opinions on the championship match of Phoenix versus Mil Muertes in yes. the Gift of the Gods cash in. What did you guys think? Yeah, this I mean, is like when your boy won the cruiserweight title, Meef. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I had to. So mean. For some reason, I felt like I remember there being a lot more blood. Mm. And not that there wasn't that was, a lot of blood, but I just remember there being a lot more. That was his Marty feud when it mm. waterfall. No, out. but we didn't no, want to hug. We place. weren't running up and hugging Phoenix because he had blood all over him. Well, you weren't. But I wasn't. Yeah. Well, was this one yeah. of those things Brandon that got was. edited down a little bit for TV? Like we, we saw more live than what was actually seen here. I don't remember. I, I don't, don't remember. It's been so long. I just I remember wasn't, Phoenix I wasn't walking by and just patting him on the back really nicely, and that's it because he was like covered in blood. This was uh, I learned uh, my the- mistake hugging Drago, dude, after that fucking <laughs> match and getting all that slime all over me. Is this after he threw the nunchucks over his head? Wow! <laughs> wow! I'm just reading some chat comments. Uh, it's pretty funny. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> That's I mean, so you're not wrong. It's generally. <laughs> Can I just read that for the show? I don't no. know. No. It's, no. Fine. it's funny though. We'll just let everyone know it's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's and about really a certain. Funny. It's about a certain believer in all of his beliefs, <laughs> and all yeah. of he believes in, and I mean in. Um. Well, I, in. Yeah. Look, this match Sunday was exactly. This ex- match is exactly what you wanted. You know, Phoenix was a, a, a bona fide star. Um, this didn't make him the triple crown champion at this point yet, did it? He still has to win the hidden he he the trios, trios champion. Yeah, he's done the super friends. Okay. That's right. So that's when that's when also, this match up. reminded me of how much I love Phoenix. Just in uh, general. Is, yeah, AEW every week does. I, you know, my Phoenix on my shelf is Zombie Phoenix, though. I, he's going like, uh, I, I can't I not put him up like that. No, you got to put it. You got to do the the little pose that he does after he, oh yeah, when he's head, on and then he just goes face to face with him like, oh, you're so adorable. That's a good idea because he's got the smiley face and he's got those hands. That's a good idea, Byron. I'm gonna steal it. Fuck you. Um, I mean, this this also shows you though that Phoenix. I mean, thank you. Phoenix is better to me when he's not against another high flying luchador. Like he needs a good solid base, but a good base that can move and be fast in the ring too. Like at this yeah. particular point in time, Mill is super fast when he's running the ropes, when he's hitting his spot. Like the dude is not playing around. Congratulations. You will defend the title in Aztec warfare. Yes. So Katrina swerves us at the end. Um, and this whole thing is, by the way, she kissed Millful on the mouth mid match. After she's, he bit into Phoenix's head. She's all yeah, about the he, bodily. Yeah, fluids. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't scripted. I don't think that yeah. there was, because the camera wasn't there. It was in a weird spot. Like what? she just wanted to stick her tongue in Ricky's mouth. What was going on there? Good for her. All right. <laughs> all right. 
Uh, yeah. Good for her, not not for him. Good for her. There's for there's her. a there's a little it. bit of something for everyone on Lucha Underground. Yeah, she, sure she had a little bit of something passing around to everyone there's else. A, she must have, she Dolph, saw Dolph, she Dolph, saw Dolph. him in that suit. Let's they be got, real. She saw him in that suit. Come on, come on. Yeah, she, yeah I would have yeah, kissed yeah. him too. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, so Katrina swerves us, and this year's oh, as- that, that, hold on, I have to interrupt because Casey and I at one of the shows had Mill worked his masks on ringside, and he came <laughs> up with, say- and he went face to face with us, and they cut it out, but they he yeah. went face to face with us, so like growled in our face, like, yeah, like yeah. back at him. You know? They didn't show it because we're actually two feet taller than him. Um, yeah, but Shh, but Byron Byron by- 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 should have kissed him. Could you imagine he does that? He just give him a peck right there. Like, Vessel. Uh, the, that that one kid. Up. That one kid when uh, he was when Milmore was, was ringside, like went up and did the you know dumb mark thing the wrestlers do. They like to touch the wrestlers' bodies, like, and he was like, ah! he almost cut him in half with his hand. Could you imagine if I if I just gave him a quick one right there? You would never Mar- see me again. Mar- Mariachi Loco did that to me once when he was the skeleton. <laughs> oh my god! I'm just saying. Just saying, not, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I wouldn't slap his hand. Yeah. Well, so anyway, this year's Aztec warfare is not going to be for the gift of the gods. It's going to be for the belt of the belts. And uh, mm. it will be next week on the Lucha Underground Rewind. Um, and and we're going to have some guess interesting what? competitors. We're going to have a, maybe a Matanza show up. We're going to have uh, a Rey Robert Mysterio, a, a Dragon Azteca. Junior, is this, is this, does Robert Rodriguez show up on this episode or the next one? Because he was there for both of them. I think he he doesn't show up until the next one. Should I should I tell the Robert Rodriguez story? That's the best Robert Rodriguez story right now. Yes. Yeah. The answer is yes. Okay. So Robert Rodriguez, man, you know he he comes down and he's pretty pumped. He's like, yeah, motherfucker comes down the steps and he's slapping people's hands, slapping people's hands. This one fan didn't have his hand out. He slapped that guy right in the face, <laughs> right in the face. Yeah. Learned a lesson. Not even, not even looking where he's slapping, dude. Okay. First of all, in, in this age, you got to watch where you're slapping. You might slap something that doesn't need to be slapped. He's used to working with a green screen. Give him some slack. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know amazing. how Byron stands crotch first at ringside, hoping for an errant slap. Always. What? Yeah. That's yeah. why That's he always pushed never, to the side. He said never what he happened. said, Byron. That never yeah, you basically do. You basically do a back bridge and just like lay there. <laughs> it's really awkward. All right. Oh, let's take another never. quick break. I got to hit Wikipedia and look up something about Lex Luger real quick. If you're listening to this and you haven't visited LuchaCentral.com, it's time to do it. LuchaCentral.com is the online home for Lucha Libre, where you can get all of the top news in English and in Spanish. Find the best curated video content and original content not seen anywhere else. Find when Lucha Libre events would be happening in your area. Find photo galleries from top photographers covering Lucha Libre around the world. From weekly polls to annual awards. Seen and read by top executives in all of the major Lucha Libre promotions across the globe. And on top of that, it's free. LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. And we're back. Oh, when did we come back? I don't know. We're back oh. right now, Byron. Oh, oh, is there a is there a PlayStation 4 your friends that love you bought you? You guys oh. are so awesome for that, by the way. Like, I realized the other day how awesome my friends are, and that's you guys. I mean, oh, thank you. the term friends is loose but i don't know if i have said this on the show or not before but these guys when i was uh hating it and forced to quarantine with my soon-to-be ex-wife and life was absolutely miserable these motherfuckers sent me a playstation 4 to keep me sane through the beginning and we were just in the dm the other day talking about how much my life has changed since then like oh my god but the only reason i survived it is these dumb fucks um but yeah dude so enjoy this flashlight we sent you is that what this is i don't know i got this yeah. box today I'm trying to we got you we got you we the, got the one the smallest size. yeah we got you the baby yoda model that's all right I like, my tight. I like them tight i've been to wrestling schools before i know how you do it oh. all right trade it trade it with chase and rance again huh? just saying oh. Oh. there's an invoice here there's two of something in here let's see what i got <clears throat> 
Oh, this is no surprise to anyone. I got some of these. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on, Justin. Wait, I need to make Wait. it big so me can see it. Big. Wait. Yeah. Did I just order these like two days ago and still get them before Meef? We just I lost someone. Did. We just lost <laughs> someone. <laughs> just <leave. laughs> it's amazing. Oh, gosh. These are, uh, for the audio <laughs> listeners, these are the Boss Fights Legends of Lucha Libre, um, Penta and uh, Ray Phoenix. And they're I'm pretty badass. I got, to, I got to play with Byron's uh, a couple of weeks ago. And... Um, Quite possibly the best action figure I've ever seen. So when I heard that there was some more available, I was like, oh, you know, I don't collect a ton of stuff, but I definitely would like to have those. And I had some money in the bank finally. Yeah. So uh, oh, God, I heard I heard they so I intercepted Meek's order before they flew it across. Yeah. The, the I heard they there. restocked exactly two of them. Uh, it's really interesting. <laughs> um, I would so <laughs> it's so weird that they have such a problem putting something in a in a box and writing beef's address on it god i I've laughed it so hard times. just now that i was in tears you guys oh <laughs> jesus Christ. so so that was a successful unboxing i don't do very many unboxings on this show but i'll consider that a success all right beef, so will you want to face murder me with whatever tool he's working Casey, with right what do you rate them what do you rate them Casey, yeah rate them motherfucker yeah come I'm, on i'm rating these yes you know the format that we always do every time no, I don't know anything about it. I, don't, I tune you guys out when you guys are doing that shit. We do this every time. You have to rate it between. Yeah, you um, have to rate it by how long Batista's dick is. Like so I rate these. Wrong show. I give these a, oh. a zero. Yeah, no, right? He froze. No, I don't he froze, know. He froze with his hand in the masturbation thing. Great. I, I, yeah, I don't You're know. I, now. These are the best. What, what's the what's a high rating? A thousand. Yeah. All right, I'll give him. I'll give him a ninety nine. Point nine nine nine. Out of a thousand. Wait, no, that's ten percent. No, oh I'm sorry. Nine hundred and ninety nine point nine nine. I don't yeah, know. I, don't I, know. I, I can't rate them. I'm never going to open them. It's be, it's because they fucked up the legs, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm I told never, you. I'm never opening these, so I'll never know completely. So when someone, I've opened. Uh, when somebody open else rates them a thousand, shit. that's when I'll sell them to them on eBay. I, I rated so, a thousand. I already got them. They're on my yeah. shelf right now. Um, yeah. They're actually like blue tack to my shelf. So I'm not going to bring them down to show people shit again because I don't care that much. Um, but I do have a lot of stuff to unbox, Justin. All right. Go for it, man. What do you got? All right. um, so go. I'm going to start with the stuff related to that. Okay. Since you just opened yours, sort of. That's not even an unboxing. You just took boxes he out did. of another box. So that's an unbo it's more of an unboxing than what you're going to do. I took something out of a box. Sorry, he hey, literally. You know what? How about I put leave it in the other in box? How about I? How about you bend over and I put something in your fart box? Okay, mm, Byron. My Meef wallet. Oh, Meef. What's up with our Meef? That's wallets? what the company should be called, the Meef wallets. No, that's what he sells. God, I'm handsome. Okay, Lucha Leather sells about... Meef wallets. Okay, so there's two weapon so packs from Boss Fight Studios. The thing. Guys, guys, Boss Fight. I'm okay. focused, man. I'm with you. Boss Fight came out with two weapons packs, okay? They came out with the Lucha Extrema pack, and they came out with the Lucha de la Muerte pack, okay? But the thing is, I opened both of them, and I got them all mixed up. I don't remember what the fuck comes in each one. It doesn't really matter. Buy them both, okay? They're like 20 bucks a piece. They come up with a bunch of cool shit, okay? So if you see a weapon you like... I'll, I'll buy them both and leave them in the box. I'll buy them both and leave them in the box, and then you'll know which is supposed to be in where. How about that? No. Okay. <laughs> so this is the utter this, disdain for what you just said. <laughs> this is, is a table. Okay. This yeah. is a table. It breaks into three pieces. That's dope. Fancy. Most tables break in three pieces. Now, not anything new. It does have, have a table. It does, I have a Jericho table that breaks in two. Oh, uh, see, so look at this. That actually nice makes sense. Grain. Pretty good wood grain pattern. I like know, it. Nice. Okay, so there's a table. Okay, so you can't have a table without a chair, you see. Nice little chair. Folds up just like a real thing. You know, nothing too impressive. It's a chair. What the fuck? We see chairs all the time. Okay? Yeah. At least it's not those shitty ones Jack Pacific used to give you with their figures that no one could even oh, sit on. Okay? So those sucked really fucking bad. All right. Then there's a cinder block. So... 
you can break the cinder block over Willie Mac's head. And it has, um, it has like rebar that holds it together. See? So See it's that? not made out of toothpaste. No, no, <laughs> it's because you can't reuse that, you know? So it, this is, this has got a nice texture to it. A pretty cool paint job. Looks pretty good. You can break it. The only thing is like, you have to pull it apart to break it. You can't just like hit your figure with it really hard and have it break, which kind of sucks. Uh, Cause the table, you can like literally throw a dude through the table, you know, and you get like a boner when you do it. Um, at least that's what the Dudleys taught me. And uh, now, I just have a question on this packaging. Are these like legends of Lucha Libre accessories? Yes. So is, is that legends of Lucha Libre taped over, um, Wrestling Society X that's also taped over XPW? No, but just, uh, just a question. Weird, yeah, we're going to get into even weirder shit. Okay, this isn't okay, even go. like, okay, fucking, oh, tough guy, USA, big two oh. by four, but it's the long one. Yeah. So it's really the union because the union all had small penises. And not you, Ken Shamrock. Don't fuck me up. I mean, test. He's dead. He can't do shit. And uh wow. yeah, two by two by four. It doesn't break or anything, it's just a two by four. Um uh, there's uh there's a microphone, you know. Hey Kevin, great job making sure they put some Mass Republic branding on the flag there, pal. It's supposed to be uh, on it's supposed to be there. I, I thought it was too, and it's not. We know what would look really good there, an MMM show logo. Yeah, is there a sticker is pack it? that's supposed to be no, yeah. but you know what? I think we should make one. I it's think we should make because. one because there's something else that they need to make that we'll talk about earlier. Also, so Phoenix comes with a Singapore. Can well, he mm -hmm. comes with a kendo stick as we've established. There's another kendo stick in the pack. So you can have to have him fight. Yeah. Same deal with Penta. He comes with a light tube. One of the packs comes with an extra light tube. Same exact light tube. Cross Nothing angles. breaks. Looks really cool, though. Even has the little plugs on it. You know. I mean, you could quite easily snip it in half and then put like a pin in it just ever so slightly. Yeah. But then the four year olds in the third row mm. oh, might get damaged by it. So you got to be careful. Okay. And also um, I need to legal teams around. Around. Justin, are you um, with your figure stuff going on? Are you also, I don't know how to word this. Um, when you're playing with your figures, are you also playing with figures that are four years old? What? Are you playing with four-year-olds? Why is there a concern over light tubes? It was an ultimate okay, so lucha joke. Yeah, okay, it was an thank you, Jim. Joke, Byron. Thanks, like, thanks for asking, Jim. Um, first of all, okay, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get a, a, a little song going. You know, if you ever take a trip down to Cobb County, George, there's a sign on the wall: respect the law in order to some hard time. He carries a big dick and some hairy ball too. Okay, look, we got a nightstick. Was that the big boss man theme? Yeah, dude. Nothing says nothing says lucha like a nightstick, dog. Nothing says lucha <laughs> like a nightstick. <laughs> Not uh, a nunchuck, but a nightstick. We got a cookie sheet. Oh, don't even get me started because that's what the fucking Ninja Turtles did because of Meef's country taking the fucking <laughs> nunchucks away from Michelangelo and giving him fucking tongfa. Fancy word for nightstick. You know what, that, to be fair, that, to be fair, one of the key, um, yeah. one of the key players in one of the greatest Lucha Libre shows of all time, Lucha Underground, was Eric Van Wagner, who portrayed a police officer who probably had a nightstick. So it's canon. And technically, so, Tunfa are like Psy. You're supposed to carry two of them. Yeah, but look at this. Okay, speaking of two, these are That's these dope. are nipple nipple clamps that come in, and you go like. No, dog these collar, are right? these Fuck dungeon. The, these are the dog collars. Um, they need oh, no, a little work. Those don't go over the neck, do they? No, they don't. You have to rip the head off to do it. So they're not compatible with other toy lines. They don't open and close, and they don't go over the head. So you can only use them. You can use them with the AEW figures. Oh, so you can rip the heads off. You Casey. said dog Casey, collars. Casey. I thought you said Byron Cochran. I gotcha. Okay. These are okay, way so too big, dude. They would go all the way to the balls. Guys, don't I could, make this. I could make a little now. leather thing. I could make not... a little leather thing. You're yeah, going to make him out of leather? Make you a leather. So I could make you a little leather collar. They've got a real chain, though, which is kind of neat, but they kind of fuck the neck thing up because, okay, like these accessories, they have two figures out right now. I know more are coming. 
but Penta's neck flaps don't really hold this all that well. When you try to put on his head, it makes it so it's hard to put, keep his head on. Phoenix wears it pretty well. Um, you can put this on some AEW figures. The WWE figures, some of them have alternate heads that you can pull off and put these on. But yeah, it's um, these are kind of a mess. I'm a little disappointed they didn't have like something that can just connect around the neck. Uh, like a little tab with like a, a hole that you can... You know, still, magnet. you know, you know, it's still kind of cool, magnet though. would work pretty good, but then, you know, magnet, I can't just, you know, um, to describe it. Uh, also, uh, a sickle straight up Mr. Pogo shit. That's dope. Pretty ah. cool. Pretty cool. Um, a little thick on the blade. I think that's might be for safety reasons, even though these are marketed towards adults. It's actually very, very pointy. You could really hurt yourself if you put this in your eyes or dick. What hole. happens if you, you swallow it? I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I'm just trying to keep it out of my eyes and dick hole. Uh, so next, um, four strands of rubber barbed wire that have little like hooks and rings so you can connect them to different things. You can use them to wrap the weapons. These are kind of cool. They actually look like really good. So you got the official Kenny Omega barbed wire. That's pretty dope. No, that's actually coming later and is an actual item. Um, it it actually is, in. isn't it? We yeah. went over it last week. And uh, there's a barbed wire wrapped baseball bat, yes. uh, which is really cool because you can pull the barbed wire off of the bat, mm. making both things completely useless. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Uh, there's all speaking of useless. Me um, just made you a new leather collar. Speaking, speaking of useless, um, they're not really useless. They're just a little weird. There's these alternate heads for Mass Republic logo masks. Okay. So you could put these on Phoenix or Pentagon and pretend they're like generic wrestlers that have very identifiable tattoos and costumes. Um, okay, look, I'm not going to shit on these too much because I really want them to do an MMM show one. And they're actually really well done. See, they got the Master Public logo. They put like laces on it and stuff. And yes, we we authorize you doing an MMM show one. We Yeah, we, authorize we gave them the rights it. a long time ago. Yeah, go ahead and use do like the the podcasting starter kit set that with like a couple microphones with actual flags with that logo Jim's pointing to, and then yeah. like a masthead and then like a flashlight. Mm. Baby Yoda green flashlight. For you just testing. need the, you just need these accessories. For a so when someone pod. tells us to go fuck ourselves, then we would have to use that. Right? Is that mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. the implication is? So that was the weapons packs. They're going okay. right back into here i have i have one more thing to show you guys uh oh okay what you got so, so that stuff that stuff was pretty badass but check out this dick no um okay uh you put on a the couple bundle. weeks a couple weeks ago i introduced you to a friend of mine from japan and his name is uh the great muda you yeah know? that's dope um this is pretty pretty amazing right well i how ordered another you, how one did you top that casey well, I ordered another one, and they both took 75 years to get here. A little less than those uh, boss fight figures. And uh, I got Minoru Suzuki Dope. with towel. Kaze Ninare. Look at this. Okay, look at the detailing on this. Okay, so you got his hair, right? Like, look at that. Look at that nice hair. Yeah. I got a little mark from That's his fucking cool. towel on his face because they paint like shit. <laughs> and then I got... Uh, Look at that face, that sneer, you know. Look, you got uh, the towel with the Suzuki uh with the Suzuki logo. You got those delicious milk dud like nipples right there. And he even has like the little the little uh the little red stripe on his on his trunks. They did they did their work, you know. Uh, poor man has no ass. Uh but one of the greatest wrestlers that ever lived, Minoru Suzuki. Look at look look at that. Like look, like that's pretty dope, like, dude. I'm, this I'm is gonna like for that. That's this is dope. like Minoru, Minoru's watching you fuck. You know what I mean? Like, look at that eyebrow raise. Come on, The Rock can't do that. Look at that. Okay, so, so my friends, uh, no, this is this is a great figure. He looks like he's like all of my other toys are scared of him already. I just took him out of the box and they're fucking jumping off shelves trying to end their lives before he does it with the Gotch style pile driver. So uh, I highly recommend it, uh, especially if you have figures you don't like. You know, like. Say you bought like the China figure just so you could get Rocco from you know oh. fucking uh, Legion of Doom, you know, uh, you know he'll he'll take care of that, you know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, look, look at Elizabeth. this. 
<laughs> it's got the Suzuki gun. He signed it's it. That's his signature, signature, isn't it? Or is yeah, that the logo? Just, that's the logo. Um, he did sign a limited amount of these, and me and Byron found out about that after they had all already sold out. Um, and we would have had to ship them from Japan and all that. Good Smile Company, the company that makes these, they actually shipped to the U.S. In, yeah. in 87 years, you'll have fucking gray ball hairs, gray nose hairs, everything. You'll get a figure and you'll be like, I remember them. They're long dead by this point, but they're, <laughs> they're pretty good. But Suzuki is forever. He's still alive. Yeah. No, Good Smile is great. I ordered the replica IWG. Anybody hungry for some milk duds? Then, <laughs> <laughs> On that note, stay calm. Stay no, we there. have more stuff to Penis. do. Penis. Well, do we? What else do we have to do? I don't know. I can't Play think Fortnite. of another possible thing. Anybody else? Yeah, anything else? Say bye. Oh, uh, yeah, bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, 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 uh, I'm, I'm going to come up with something. No, Why? It usually it takes longer for you guys to let me to talk. Okay, uh, so, the, so Byron, the, uh, what AEW, kind of... Uh, AEW, by the way, since NXT is gone, uh, they had 1.2 million viewers last week and this week they had like a touch over 1 million they're doing great you know why also you know why also also what's doing great is the um uh uh take on no, fuck you uh, that's not what we're talking about they who did else great, doing great as well who else is yeah. doing great byron penta god fucking damn it do i have a penta impression byron taz byron taz <laughs> say the word Hook, taz. by the way Hook, by the way, is out here just not even wearing sleeves on national TV, just recklessly. Imagine. Shut the know. fuck up, Byron. Let me tell you something there, Byron Fever. Yeah, look at you. Oh, we got a whole full house over here. We got me Meatloaf. We got the Outlaw. We got Jim Blaskor. Hey, listen. <laughs> Hook is a Division One wrestler. And he's six foot and shredded so I don't want to see you talk any shit about my son where's like, he from he's from the Red Hook section of Brooklyn, New York and let me tell you something Hangman Page, Ricky Stocks might not have been able to you know, to, to, to hurt you in any way in 15 minutes, but you know what Hook one chop block, brother one chop block, brother and you were just another victim <laughs> to the human machine. My Taz is a little off right now. It's, Where did me go? So let until me tell you next what time. Me, hey, yeah, hold on there, Justin. Let me tell you what <laughs> Meatloaf went. You see, because uh, he's got a he's got a naked mannequin behind him, you know. And uh, <laughs> we're yeah, gonna get kicked go, off YouTube because of that. He went to go get some Ooh, polish for those. Uh, lo- Byron, can we give him the one? Yeah, we can. <laughs> stay calm and stay in the mix. Ain't it?